Hi and welcome to episode 47 of China Tools. And oh boy, do I have some nice products to show you. And one of the most exciting products I have been waiting for since episode 18 to complement this Hongdui Maida gauge is this Hongdui Maida fence. And it took them way too long, but they did it. I think they made the best Maida gauge fence combination currently on the market. And yes, I can act very enthusiastic when I am, but I also think it's not that lighthearted. So I will cover in this video why I think that is the case. And for this video, I revisit my good old friend Henry. And those who follow my channel know Henry because I visit him while testing the sharpening tool. Henry is a woodworker, and when I have some analog tools like planers, I like to visit him because he sort of went nuts on this subject. But in this case, I also had some products to set up your table saw correctly. And because I have a slider, I could not test it in real world conditions. So I did not need that much of an excuse to revisit them. So we compared some dial gauges and saw gauge together. And I asked Banggood a few because I was curious if there would be a practical difference between these different designs. So in this video, I will go back and forth between his and my workshop. But first, I want to go back to the last time I visited Henry. We reviewed this sharpening tool. And I rated this product 5 stars. It is an incredible tool that makes it easy to sharpen your chisel and plate blades. Anyway, some viewers asked me if spare wheels would be available. So I asked Banggood if that would be possible, and they did. So I do not know how long they will sell it separately, but I think it can be interesting to get this pair of uh, spare wheels when you already have the sharpening tool. The wheels are the only part subjects to wear and tear, so to have an extra pair of these extends the life of this product. Okay, it's time to look at this minor gauge fence. And hopefully those who follow my channel will remember episode 18 where I reviewed this Hongdui Mighty Gauge. And I call it one of the best Mighty Gauges on the market. And in this video I explained extensively why this was one of the most accurate Mighty Gauges. And I still stand behind these statements. Also after I became familiar with the top models of Harvey, Jessen and Inca. After this video the most asked question was, is there a fence available? And I knew they were busy with the fence, but it took them until recently to launch it. And this fence is perfectly packed in a double box and protected as we expect from a tool with this ambition level. And if you look at it and feel it in your hands, it is almost impossible that it leaves you unimpressed. It's such a beautiful made piece of equipment that looks well thought through with a perfect fit and finish. And because it has so many features, it's good a clear manual is included. Although the fence is sold separately, it perfectly combines with the home with Mighty Gauge. And connecting the fence to the Mighty Gauge is simple. And the big knobs make it very comfortable and straightforward. And before using your Mighty Gauge, you must ensure that your Mighty Track is correctly aligned with your saw blade. You can only align the fence with the saw blade when this is correct. And the best tool for this is a saw gauge or a dial gauge of which we compare three in this video. And we can adjust the fence in the correct position with the mighty gauge. And one of the strong points of this mighty gauge is how straightforward you can do this. Feel nauseous, believe me. Never had a lot of shit come easy. Had to work hard. This is a short message that when you need some inspiration to make the best out of your workshop, visit my website www.hooktonwood.online. Here you will find all the ideas I came up with to improve my workshop. And now I offer detailed plans for most of these ideas. So visit www.hooktonwood.online. Hongdu Mighty Fence does have a scale on top, so to make it accurate we have to set the flip stop to the zero positions. And for this we first set uh, the micro adjusted to zero and the rest of the process is very straightforward. And 
The micro adjuster feels very solid and the dial works smooth. And in my accuracy test, I had to go past my setting and backtrack it a bit for a precise adjustment. And there were a few hundreds of a millimeter deviation when I did not do this. I particularly like the size of the fence. It's not too short, but it's definitely not too long. And because it's a telescope fence, we can make it longer when needed. Its total reach is around 90 centimeters, and the construction is solid, and we only need to loosen one screw to slide it. It has the most straightforward way of reading the correct measurements from all the fences I know when you slide it outside the base. And also the micro adjuster is usual in this extended position. But look at how this all fits into the base. It fits perfectly and underscores the fence fit and finish quality. There's a metric and increment scale and you can change this by reversing the ruler. And the fact that it is not combined gives a more clear and organized look. The flip stop is sturdy and has practically no side movement. Still, it moves very nicely and smoothly. And to secure it even further, there is a stop you can tighten to make it a very solid stop. And because it has a magnet, it easily follows the flip stop when sliding. But it can also act as a quick stop. It is also possible to place the stop in the second rail, so it is not in the way when the timber you want to cut is below 30 mm. And also in this rail, it connects to the flip stop magnet, so it slides with the flip stop. If you look a little bit closer to the flip stop, we see it hides a little pin inside. And it is secured with a magnet, and you can add this pin to different places on your flip stop. And this can be convenient in some situations, especially when you have cuts or miters and the edge is a bit fragile. We often use a sacrificial fence to create a clean cut, or we want more support behind our workbench. But when using a sacrificial fence, your flip stop will no longer be close to your fence. So with this piece you can add to your flip stop, you can use your flip stop in combination with a sacrificial fence. One drawback is that this addition is slightly wider than the flip stop itself. So if accuracy is your main concern, you need to adjust the zero position slightly. And although this only takes three seconds, it was the only drawback I could discover. And I just want to show you some shots to get a good impression of the quality, because that is on par with that of Harvey. The flip stops are very impressive and the two bar telescope system makes it very stable. And even at the underside, a massive plastic inlay protects your table saw and makes it slide smoothly over your surface. They just thought about everything with this fence. In episode 18, I reviewed this home doing mighty gauge. And please watch this episode when you are interested in the good mighty gauge, because I explained in this video why I think it's a better choice over a Jessam and a Harvey mighty gauge. And I still think this stands. And Hongdu chose to develop a high quality fence, so it's not built to be affordable. Still, for $145, you get a fantastic fence that leaves nothing left to wish for. The combination with the mighty gauge is around $280. But for that price, you will have the best mighty gauge fence combination currently on the market. And this, this is my scoring card. You saw me align my saw blade to the miter track with a saw gauge or dial gauge. And I have three versions for my good, two with a dial and one without. And I consider it an essential tool. However, you can also use your combination square for this. But like many tools made for specific purposes, it mostly shines within this particular area. Compared to a combination square, the biggest advantage of these saw gauges is the tiny point at the end and the fact that they slide more stable into your mighty track. 
and they measure the positive and negative deviations. And the most important function in the first place is to help you to align your sub date with your MITRE tracks. And the MITRE tracks should be perfectly parallel to your sub date. And by most table saws, it is the table you can adjust to align it to your sub date. And when it's not perfectly parallel, there is a chance of kickbacks where you use your MITRE fence. And besides that, your MITRE cut will not be accurate. So this would be the first thing to check. And the second is to align your fence correctly. And one thing is to check if your fence is nicely straight and parallel to the saw. And different from the MITRE track, most set the fence, so it is a little bit off at the end of the fence. And this is to avoid kickbacks, especially when there is tension in your timber while cutting. This does not affect the accuracy of your cut. So now we know what these tools are for. Let's take a close look because they are all different in some ways. And first I want to show you this red dial gauge. And this is similar to my Inca saw gauge, which costs around $150. And at the sides, there are some small screws with a round tip with a spring inside, so it presses against the inside of your rail track. So we just have to adjust these two screws to let it slide stable into your mitre track. But this saw gauge also needs two screws to stabilize the saw gauge itself. And this is relatively easy to do because you do this from above. But the undersides of these screws are not that smooth and therefore do not slide that smoothly. So this is a bit noisy. The middle bar has different holes by which you can set up the length you need. And ultimately, we did not find it the most straightforward setup. The advantage of the dial is that you can slide back the pin a bit when you want to slide it to the other side of your saw blade. And the reach of this dial gauge is long enough to reach the saw blade and your fence from one mighty track. The second dial gate is this one. It looks very nice and it has a more comprehensive base, so it's sort of stable on its own. And we only have to adjust it to the mighty track. And it uses the same screws as the former dial gates, but it has four of them. And the springs give you some room to make this job relatively easy. It slides a bit more smoothly than the red uh, dial gates. And this dial gate is so much more straightforward to set up than the red one, which has a more traditional design. You just slide it against the saw blade or fence and tighten it with the screw. And these dial gauges' biggest advantage is that they give information about positive and negative deviation. This dial gauge is the shortest in the test, and although both mile tracks should be the same, it is best to choose one reference, and that reference should be the one you run your mile gauge in. So if you want to set up your fence from the left mile track on a big saw like this Harvey, it wouldn't mind if it was just a little bit more. And the last saw gauge uh, uses an entirely different approach. It also has a bigger base, so it's stable on its own, but it uses two plastic rings or washers that will expand when you tighten them. But the biggest advantage of this saw gauge is that you can expand the plastic ring from above the table. So that makes this saw gauge the most straightforward to set up. And, and because of the plastic rings, it also slides the smoothest. And adjusting the pin to your saw blade or fence is also fairly easy. And we prefer the dial gauges, but we are convinced that the outcome would remain the same. With this saw gauge, you can perfectly align your minor track and your fence. But there are some disadvantages of this design. When you want to slide it to the other side of your saw blade, it takes more care because it cannot go over the curve. And when the deviation is towards your saw gauge, it gets stuck. And the dial gauges give some better reference of the degree of deviations. So after some playing, it was time to make up our minds about the saw gauges. Ultimately, we like the black and yellow one on the dial gauges. And we think the design is the most practical and convenient when aligning your saw blade or fence. And although the dial quality is visibly lower than the high quality brands offer, for $28, they are substantially more affordable. And although we think this is an essential tool, you will not use it that much, perhaps a few times a year. So considering the dial quality, it seems good enough if you are looking for an affordable and more practical alternative than your combination square. And this, this is my scoring card.
the red one has practically the same price. And although it has a more traditional design, we are still looking for an advantage over the winner in this test. So we would rate this one three and a half stars. And the third cell gauge did not have a dial. And if we had a choice, we would prefer the dial. But we also have to say that this uh, cell gauge was more convenient than we initially thought. That you can adjust it from above is so much more convenient, especially when you need to use it in more locations. And it was perfectly possible to see minor deviations in settings. So we do not think the setup result would be different when you compare it with the dial versions. And with $25, you can save some extra bucks. And this, this is our scoring card. Well, that was the end of this video. I hope you liked it. Let me know in the comments. Digging into this minor gauge fence and revisiting Harry was absolutely fun. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and well, we see each other next time.